I think we are live. Okay. Welcome to the Empower Hour talk show. I am Hanifa. And I am Al Kumar. And we are your host here on the Empower Hour each and every Monday at 8 p.m. Um, make sure if you're tuning in to go ahead and just share the live. We are just going to be having a conversation today. Uh, we're going to be focusing on under construction. construction, going from going from information to application, and sort of discussing what that means for our community. How are you today, Alkama? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. It's over here at my girlfriend's house, and um, tonight. And so, yeah. So we're doing. I'm doing a show from uh, from another location. <laughs> okay. Okay. I am here trying to make sure that first of all, let me mute my, okay, it's mute. I'm looking at Facebook as well. So sorry. I cannot see the comments today. So I'll come out if you see any. Yeah. Um, anyone asking any questions or chiming in, please take care of that today, please. I left the phone. Right here, got my trusty phone right here. Okay. I left the phone in the bedroom with the chaotic children. I hear them in the background. Oh, Lord. I see. I was hoping. <laughs> okay. So how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm sitting here now just sharing this stream to my homepage so we can get more. Okay. And yeah, we got some folks on. Let me get in so I can see. Hey, Kyrie. Oh, Kyrie's on. Hey, Kyrie. Okay. Okay, so I'm, I'm just focusing on our Zoom, so I'm just going to be talking to you direct. I'm not getting anything from Facebook, no comments or anything. I should open up my other laptop, but it's just really big, so no. We, I got this covered. So under construction, uh -huh. information to application. So where did we get this? Uh, we came up with this title because as we were talking, we were realizing that we just wanted to discuss what moving forward looks like because we have been um, acquiring a whole lot of information over the years, not just us, but people that we know. Um, just in the community itself, we've seen a really intense awakening taking place in the community. People who were disinterested in any type of Black consciousness are now tuning in. Um, any, anyone that was interested in health consciousness, they are now tuning in. Um, nation building, people who were disinterested are now interested and in trying to find ways, you know, people who never thought of homeschooling their own children, they're now interested in doing that. So we're seeing some, you know, movement, right, happening and some interest. And so we just wanted to kind of like discuss with you guys, what does that look like? Where, how do we transition from just consuming information to actually applying what we've been learning. And so we wanted to bring that to you guys today and see what your thoughts are. So Alkama, what do you think about that, about the topic? Yeah, I do. I think that it's time. It's timely, right? And I think that there are plenty of us and that we're all in different phases and stages in our life journey, of course, mm -hmm. you know? And so, um, but I think there's enough of us at this point, it's, it's, especially from what I'm witnessing, you know, out there, mm -hmm. enough of us at this point who have um, good enough information to be able to move on, you know, and then, mm -hmm. and, and, and some of us are, don't get me wrong. There's, okay, there's yes, some of yes. us out here that are doing it, moving and shaking and moving and, and making it happen. Yes. Um, and, but then we do have a, a, a subsec subsection of others who have the information um, and but are just comfortable with just that, having the information when there could be so much more that could we could that could be we could be doing to be maneuvering all of us forward, you know, in a forward motion. So we just wanted to talk about some of those things that you know, we could be doing since we know, you know, like, you know, for instance, my, my buying land. Yes. Land, you know, we understand now, I know the, the call, the, the rallying call these days, for those of us who understand, you know, okay. the rallying call these days is reparations. Mm -hmm. Reparate, what do we want? Reparations, what do we want it now? 
cut the check. That's in the slogan. Just gotta want to hear nothing. Just cut the check. Right, right. I'm, I'm down. I'm right there with them. You know, heck yeah, cut the check. Um, however, if what we know about, you know, uh, those who are behind the signing of the checks, we know, or we should know by now that it ain't, you know, it ain't that easy for us. You know, it ain't ever, nothing ever came easy for us in this landmass. And so that is, is going to be, and is a fight as well. But what can we do, be doing in the meantime, in between time? So do we just sit around and wait for a check to be cut that may not ever come? Right. Or do we do, you know, take the reins in our own hands and start maneuvering in a direction and doing some things that we have the power to do ourselves collectively? And I think yeah. buying land is one of those. Yeah, and buying land, at least from what I've seen, um, there's a lot of people is expanding uh, their, you know, options, if, 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 if you must, as far as buying land, there are people who are buying land on in Africa, you know, different parts of Africa, because they intend to repatriate at some point, you know, there are people who have plans in place towards that repatriation, right, because repatriation, especially, you have to, you have to build connection on the, on the, um, in the motherland, right, otherwise you're being dropped off to a strange place, <laughs> You don't know anybody over there, like, you know, so there are people who are putting that into place. So buying land, not just here in America, because there are people who literally feel that running, they, they don't feel like leaving America is the solution, okay? Right. That's, there's a category of Black people who literally feel like that, like, this is my ancestors' land. I ain't going nowhere. No doubt. Right? I don't know anything about Africa. That is not, you know, so they feel that way. And then there are some of, some some people, mostly Pan-Africanist thinking people, who is kind of like, I'm kind of, I'm going to switch and focus on getting my family over to, over there, you know? Um, but I agree with you as far as the buying land piece. Um, I have seen, and I think we talked about this um, when we was on with uh, Dr. Akba, mm -hmm. how there's this destination, but so many people are taking different directions to get there. So there are some people right now who their way out is wealth building, you know? So they really focus on cryptocurrency. They focus on stocks. Like that is, that is, and it's, it amazes me because I am very careful because I know all of us have this in us be like, why, why are you taking that route? You know, this route is probably better. <laughs> I think that's silly. I think that's a waste of energy. But you know, I've been observing more than anything else. And I'm literally looking at us and I'm saying, you know what? Everybody's trying to find their best way out of this. Like right. everyone is literally like, your thing might be, you know, I think that I need to just get invest right in stocks i'm not thinking about repatriation i'm just thinking about building wealth right now that is me and my family's way out right and then there are some people who is like no mm -mm, we're leaving america in ish ain't never been ish ain't gonna be ish and right. so right. we're rolling out you know so it, everybody have that's something that i've realized everyone has their own way but for me when we were talking about the topic my thing was you know what like you said, I feel like there's enough of us and there's enough information that has gone out, right? I felt, I feel like a lot of people have left behind pieces of the roadmap yeah. for us to put together, right? And find our, you know, and find our way, right? Um, I think it's out there. I think what people need to focus on is if your thing is investing, yeah. then get with some heavy black investors. Because at the end of the day, it's still about building. That's right. It's still about building. If you if your thing is repatriation, then you better start connecting with people who are like-minded, right? So you guys could start talking about what have you been doing? Or you paying off some debt first? Or you you building your savings? You know, whether you guys have a five-year plan, a 10-year plan, whatever. Get with those people, right? If yeah. your thing is buying land here. It, look at the, those people. Um, where are they? Um, Alkama, who got together and bought that whole town? Georgia, Georgia, the homestead. Mm -hmm. That's right. what I mean. You get what I'm saying? Get with like-minded people. So when I, yeah. So when I think about application, from information to application, you're gonna have to sort seek out the people 
who or where you're at because we are not all at the same place in our journeys. We're not. Yeah. And I want to, and I want to talk a little bit about why, why that, that is uh, important to even do right now to, to start applying what we know, you know, and, and things are changing. Things are changing in this Fast, quickly, drastically and at a speed, super speed motion. I mean, you know, there's a lot of distractions. So, you know, it's a lot of things to distract us from actually seeing what's really going on. But what's really going on is a lot of things, a lot of wealth changing hands, you know? Yeah. You know, the, 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 the rich is certainly getting richer at this point. And it ain't even a whole lot. It's like a handful of people that's, that's it's like a, uh, you know, they call it land grab. It's like a wealth grab right now going on in this country. And it's only a handful of people that's taking the vast, big chunk of a, a lot of the money that's, um, that makes this economy and system move. So there's a lot of different things going on. The, the dollar, you know, the value of the dollar is, is, is drastically dropping. You know, the only thing that's propping that up right now is, is you and I believing that it's worth what, we, what they say it's worth. You know, the rest of the world are making moves and making shifts and changes. The, the rest of the, 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 the uh, world, um, those who are the, of, of the greatest competition or threat to America. You know, the Chinas, the Russians, you know, the Indians of the world, places like that. They're, they're making, they're maneuvering around the dollar, you know? And so, um, you know, the different wars and stuff that's, that's, that's going on in the, in the heightened sense of um, threats in the world. And, you know, I was just telling my girlfriend just before we went on, I said, you know, it's a big, when, when the, when the, leader of China, the president of China, or chancellor, I don't know what they call him, tells the president of America that you're not in a position to tell me what to do. That's big, that's, that's heavy family. That's heavy. Now you're supposed, you're supposed to be the world's superpower and you're telling them, you're looking at them like, you, ain't, you, you can't tell me what to do, I'm gonna do me. That is a shift of power going on. And you know, so a lot of those things is is a, is effect, it, it, it becomes effective to you and I as well. On a, you know, yeah. in a lot of different ways. So I, I think that wanna, power. I feel like that power shifted a long time ago. So here's what I understand. You say that publicly, though. No, right, right. No, no, no. What I'm saying is what I understand yeah. about what I understand about America. And I was I was just talking to someone about this too. Like I'll use the media as an example. News, for example. Um, how much of our news is filtered? We know that. Oh, okay? good point. No, like, good. yeah, like a lot of our news is filtered. We get what they want us to get. Okay. That tells you, that should tell you something right there. Right. So if, if a lot, I'm, I'm using this example in the sense, like, I feel like even things in America, like we're going to start getting news and we're going to start getting news about things, right. That are going to be like discoveries right but i can promise you the public is 10 at least 10 years late on it when we receive it yeah so let's yeah. say this they come with something some alien stuff okay <laughs> by the time they decide it's okay to release this to the public right the public is already 10 years or more behind right that's you right see what i'm saying so when you talked about that power shift i think even with the pandemic happening I think that's when a lot of people realize America may not be as powerful as she declares herself to be. Somewhere along the, uh, the way, that energy, not that energy, that power shifted. You get what I mean? And we, didn't, we weren't aware of it. This is before the pandemic. And now the pandemic happened and, and just the way um, they handled their citizens <laughs> during that time was a tell like that was, was really telling so when you mentioned that and that's my thing oh when we talk about information to application we really need to stop depending on our government to tell us the truth mm. and our, our news media to inform us right here's what i know black people has always been a people connected to source right black people have always been a, a spiritual people okay 
black people have all, like when you talk about for example the dogons right and how they knew certain things as far as the stars and like there are so many examples we've always been connected but what has happened i in my opinion is there's a lot of distraction that have dragged us outside of ourselves okay not kicking and screaming by the way we are voluntarily doing this okay because if we are not, we're constantly in, in our phones, right? We're constantly distracted by something. And then we have on top of that, and this is why I'm funny about this grind culture thing, yeah. where people are just busy, busy, busy. My thing is like, when are we tuning in? Because the reality is this, we should be connected to source to the point where when something is coming, we know before it comes. Right, that's what nature does. Period. And that's what I'm observing. So as long as with all of this stuff that we're doing and applying information and progressing, where are we tapped in spiritually? We can't neglect that part of ourselves. Yeah. Because that's the part of ourselves, right? That's going to keep us alive. Honestly and, speaking. Yeah, yeah. And, and it breaks my heart when I see our people really attempting to hold on so tight. Woo! We want to hold, and I understand. You know, I understand when it's when it's all you know. You know what I'm saying? When this is this is your world, this is your life. This is you know, day in, day out. All you know is the American system, the America, the American way of life. And so when something uh uh looks like it is becoming a threat to America, we we are part of that. So we become intertwined and interlinked in that and we become fearful and we don't want nothing to happen you know what i'm saying so we'll go to war and fight to keep this system propped up but i understand clearly that for you know i understand that it you know whatever's on the other side of this got to be a hundred times better you know what i'm saying because what we've become is addicted i mean we've come comfortable and complacent in trauma and trauma and pain and chaos and immorality and all those other things that come along with it. And then we have a few of us who feel like we can stay in a little bubble and we can raise our children the best that we know how. And if we do that, we'll be okay. You know what I'm saying? But without understanding that you, you know, we we are we are a society within a society. Your child, you, you can't raise your child in a bubble. You know what I'm saying? They they gonna go out into this world and they're gonna be hit with all these things that America is offering. And so I think that, you know, you know, that just, you know, letting this their stuff fall by the wayside and linking on to each other and doing our own thing and moving forward in a more healthier place, you know what I'm saying, will give us a more healthier alternative. Yeah, realizing the need for each other too, you know. Yeah. Um, like, like we were talking about all the information that we've been given has been left by those who have passed on the, and gone on with the ancestors, like what we need to start re finding ways and how we can apply this. And we, and the reality is this, as black people in this society, we have to understand that we are probably going to have to get uncomfortable before we actually get comfortable. Absolutely. Okay. Because so much has been done so much and it's still being done right and so you're gonna have to probably give up some comforts right before and i say this all the time like if you haven't visited the motherland yet <laughs> okay and i know you have and i've been there if you haven't visited my thing with that is you literally have to begin to change your mind before you think about moving and living there you are free to do that but I'm saying that because it is not the same lifestyle that you are you, unless you have a ton of money yeah. where you can go and live in luxury, yeah. it is not the same. And literally you have, you can't go over there with your like, you know, I want, I'm going to use Western. Okay. Western way of thinking and Western, um, style styles of comfort. You get what I'm saying? And think that you're going to go over there and somehow project that onto the culture there. And cause you're going to get your feelings hurt. You know, there's some people that I've seen on YouTube who have went over 
and have made like, you know, videos as to the experiences, what the difficulties have been. They're living there. They're not visiting. They literally decide to move and live there. And you know the difference is there are some of them who are on their way back to America. You know what I mean? Um, so my thing is like begin to change your mind here. And I wanted to speak to what you just spoke to with people thinking that they could create a bubble around their own families and just be fine. It, that's a different form of individualism. Mm. Speak on. It's a different Speak. form. It's a different form because what, what can happen is then you take on the mentality of us and them. And the them becomes your brothers and sisters who look like you, who may not have made the sacrifices you made, or who may not have decided to go on the journey that you have embarked on. So it becomes a, well, that's them, that's not me, right? Because individualism uh, ends up being this sense, this sense of like detachment. So when things happen on the news, when you see them, you're like, oh, that's happening to them people. Right. Those people over there, you know, because look, because they don't want to come out of Babylon. <laughs> you don't see yourself as a part of that. That's them. Right. And so we got to be. Times you see yourself above them. Thank you. Thank you. Right. But the reality is this if, they, if you're in a country where your people are the minority and they're getting, um, you know, there's a lot of injustice, and how could you even be comfortable? Mm. How could you be comfortable? Like you said, at some point you have to interact with the same society that has an issue with people that look like you. So how, how are you comfortable? At what point do you realize that, you know what, if I don't embark on this, if I don't get with my people and walk towards, you know, bettering ourselves and finding a way out of this mess, eventually it's going to come knocking on my door. I don't care if your door is out in the woods somewhere. It's coming at some point. And so, I'm going to go on Rodeo Drive or somewhere next to the White House, downtown DC. It don't even matter. And the last thing I want to say is that because of how far behind, of course, not like from slavery, you know, to Jim Crow, you know, you're talking about segregation, and still some, some things on the law, in the law and all of these things that are happening right now, because of how far behind Black people have been, placed because of these things we can't go this we can't do this alone we can't do it individually we that's just right. cannot right that's we right. can't like we can't i don't care what we unless we just can't we have to come together and that's why i'm saying you, you're not gonna have everyone because i don't believe in unity in the sense that people talk about unity right. the, the, the idealistic unity that people tend to talk about as it pertains to black people i personally and no offense to anyone i think it's very immature you know it's a very immature perspective of the world it's a very immature perspective of human development and just how humans function as a whole that type of that type of unity you're looking for is really idealistic it's not going to happen i do believe that like-minded people could come together and really bring about change i believe but does that mean out of 10 people you will get all 10 to get on board no you might even be able to get five to get on board and that five those five like-minded people like-minded people focus on the same goal right can bring about serious change history has shown it over and over and over i think people think that when the civil rights movement was happening that somehow all black people was on board. No, there was some of us at home watching these people be hosed, okay, on I, TV. There was more black people against Martin Luther King than with him. There was 30% of the population at that time that was uh, agreed and was for the Martin Luther King and his views at that time, black people. So it's a lot of the same concept today, you know. Uh, I want to get some other folks on the stream. Saladin yeah. has said America is going down in the sea of wickedness. We were talking a little earlier. <laughs> Rhonda said we have trauma bonds to this system. We have bonded to this system by way of trauma. That's real talk. And like That's anything true. else, Ayala Von Zant taught me this one. She said we become addicted to pain. You know, we be, you can become like any other addiction. You know what I'm saying? You, it happens enough times over and over and over, you become accustomed. You become accustomed to living in sorrow and pain and all those other things. So yeah, and then, you know, it doesn't, it takes somebody else to come and shake us up 
out of that consciousness to realize, well, wow, there is a better way. I don't have to feel this pain. And a lot of times we don't even realize what we're feeling. We, it becomes normalized. We think this is the normal way of life, a normal existence in this society um, until some weight is lifted and we realize that we were walking around with heavy hearts for years, decades, centuries. But you see that level of thinking, that's, in, that's, that's almost internalized um, dehumanization of Black people. Where does that idea come from that in order for us to learn we have to suffer. In order for us to get in line, we need to be we need to be led by the nose, right? We need to be led. We need to have a collar on our neck and led. Otherwise, we can't lead ourselves. Where does the idea that in order for us to be right, we have to suffer? We got to think about that. Where does that come from? Right. Where does that come from? And so I, I believe in transmutation. Okay, I really do. I believe in the idea of. Our, our diamond being found and having to go through a process first, right? I believe in the process of gold coming to what, what we know, what we see it as today. I believe in all of those things, right? But when it comes to like human beings, us, right? And I believe that there are things to learn in our hurt, in our suffering, in our pain. I believe that. But I don't believe that we should have to subject ourselves to pain in order to grow every single time. And so I'm very careful with that, that message. And so we gotta be, that's, we're, we're internalizing what people outside of us who do not love us, think about us, okay? These people need to be beaten into sub subjection. These people need to be beaten into subjection. It is the only way for them to learn. That is what we say when we say we have to suffer Okay, like when people say we got to thank God for slavery, because had it not been for slavery, we wouldn't be able to live in America as if Africa was so terrible. That's it. So I just wanted to inject that. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm on. Um, I also wanted to get um Saladin's other point, and he said, um, the dry bones in the valley of death are hard headed, stiff necked, and rebellious says the scriptures. Unfortunately, it's going to take a severe whipping from the enemy to, say, <laughs> to unite the dry bones to live. You had just, <laughs> to your, to, to, in opposition to your point. <laughs> Thanks, Alkama. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, but going back to some of the things that we could be doing collectively, um, oh, move we ourselves. talked about like building with like getting with like-minded people. Getting with like-minded people. Mm -hmm. I have collaborating in business. Mm -hmm. Another thing you mentioned, you just mentioned about how we can't do it alone, and that's no. another thing that I don't think we really uh, comprehend on a on a wide, large scale as of yet. The importance of collaborating with each other when it comes to business. It's fine mm -hmm. that you have doing your own thing and you, you know, you're doing, you know, you, you know, your individual out there making it happen. But think about all of the major power sources that in business that's that currently operate today. And you know, the ones that are the most powerful are the ones that uh, merger and acquisitions. They take one business and they merge it with somebody else. And now they become a super business, a superpower. And so, you know, they collaborate, they collectively, you know what I'm saying? So, so Google and, and YouTube work together to on their information boards and they collaborate all the time. Facebook collaborates with, uh, you know, YouTube or they buy out Instagram or, you know what I'm saying? So my point in all that is that um, we can do that too. We may not, be, we may not have um, all the resources that these superpower businesses have, but we have each other as resource, you know? And I think that if we could um, learn to not compete so much against, oh, them, oh, you know, yeah. and, and that's a learned behavior too, that we learn that we compete in this capitalistic system and that we, I, you got to get it, you know, even if it means cutting off the knees of your brother or sister, I got to get mine because my family got to eat. Well, imagine if you collaborated with that same individual and now both of y'all put y'all heads together and y'all built something together. And now 
both of y'all are eating twice as much as if you would then what you could do on your own accord. And so I think just a, it's a lot of it is a mind state shift. You know what I'm saying? Coming out of a place of individualism, because again, that's a learned behavior. We've learned that along the way in this society. You know what I'm saying? To put up a fence in your yard to keep others away. And, you know what I'm saying? And do you know this is mine, me, mine, I. You know that whole individualistic thing. And that's and one I, of mine. That's one of mine as well, Alkama. The mindset thing is is on the list of for me as well, which is the the shifting our thinking, mm -hmm. um, and the, and ways in in how we can do that. You know, for one, I think our people need to get back to nature. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, get back out into nature <laughs> and get back to connecting with nature. Um, I think we can practice a little bit more mindfulness, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of talking about being busy and not having the time, understanding that we create the time, mm -hmm. okay? Because it have to become it has to become so important for you to to get back on your center that you find a way to make time in your day for you, if it's you by yourself or you and your family. To where you guys can reconnect to your center okay um so when we talk about mindset shift everything because black people are people who are constantly healing in this society everything that we do how we deal with each other how we talk to each other how we relate to each other has to to has to be towards that healing it has to be and that's where the mindset shift come from. You talk about uh, what you were just talking about with competition, it's a lack and scarcity mindset, yeah. okay? We've been tricked into, there's not enough to go around, mm -hmm. okay? And so therefore, Alcom, I have to see you as somebody who is competing with me to get to the little bit there that I was told there is, mm -hmm. okay? So it's a lack, it's a scarcity, it's a fear, lack and scarcity mindset, mm -hmm. right? We have to begin to change and we have the power to change our own minds. We really do. We really do. The first step for me is to really remove the things that is poisoning your mind in the first place. Okay. Where are we getting the messages that we receive about ourselves? Where is it coming from? If it's coming from the TV, then we don't have to turn it off. Okay. If it's coming from the circle that you surrounded yourself with, then you need to, you need to find a different circle, remove yourself from that circle until another circle has found you. Okay. Is it, if it's the workplace that got you stressed out, you know, jacking up your hormones, right? Making you come home angry at your family. Okay. Stressing you out to where you're developing sickness in your body. You have to remove yourself from those things. And I'm talking about, this is, this still has to do with mindset shift. That's a big part of it. We're not going to work with each other if we don't see each other. Mm -hmm. If we don't, if I don't see you as my sister, mm -hmm. if I don't see you as my reflection, as somebody that I love because I love myself, mm -hmm. then I'm always going to see you as other. And as long as I see you as other and I see you outside of myself and disconnected from me, then I get to determine whether I want to treat you good or treat you bad. Yes, the case disconnected from you, huh? Hence the cancel culture. Correct. It's easy for us to throw each other away for the littlest of things, the littlest of um, things, even when we ourselves are not perfect. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So every last one of us are imperfect and make mistakes or, you know, do things that other people may not agree with. But when we, we, we cancel each other so quick over the, these type of things, because like you said, the love bond has been broken. So yeah, I don't see you as my it's brother. The, it's been replaced with the trauma bond. <laughs> right. Right. I don't see you as my brother or my sister who made a mistake or who some somebody I just disagreed with on this particular point. I see you as I hate you now because I don't like what you just said and I don't want nothing else to do with you. And then I'm gonna it, it, I'm gonna tell other people to hate, hate you too. So Here's what I know as well too, Alkama. This is the example I'm gonna use because I've kind of been doing like a lot of studying around like the brain and everything, uh, because I think it's really important that we understand how our brains work. If we're going to talk about reprogramming them, half of us, we talk about knowing self, we need to know our own biology, our makeup, how this body works and all of those things. And I think a lot of us, we don't understand our own bodies, our own selves. And so sometimes we could feel like we're hopeless. I'll give you one example. 
So you just talk about like how we start to see each other. Okay. So you know how like we, we this is the best example I could use. This is what comes to mind when people talk about seeing you go to buy a car, right? And you just know, you just know your little purple Porsche, okay? Ain't nothing out there like it. You saw it one time. So you've been thinking about it because that's what you're going to get. All of a sudden now you get your little Porsche or even as you begin to focus on manifesting it, you start seeing what? Purple Porsche is all over the place. Everywhere, everywhere, okay? So I personally believe, I personally believe that really has something to do with frequency, to be honest. I think the Porsche, the, 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 por the purple Porsche has always been there. It has always been there. Um, you, it was just, it's your consciousness just didn't have it in it as yet. You understand what I'm saying? I use that example to say like people who don't see anything but bad in us, right? It is because that is all you subject your consciousness to. Good point. Because the reality is this, you start to feed yourself good things, right? Things that make black people who they are. The awesomeness of black people, right? If you start looking for black love, right? Sincere, honest black love where black, black woman and man and child, everybody's getting along and building. You start focusing on that, right? And introduce and feeding your consciousness that I am going to tell you this. All of a sudden, you're going to start seeing it on your timeline. <laughs> right. All of a sudden, it's on your Instagram. That's right. And you'll start living it. You start living it. But that, and that's my thing is that there's something to be said about that. A lot of times the issue with us is that we are stuck in certain frequencies, in certain ways of thinking. We're stuck in kind of these really not so good consciousness, right? And so that's all we can see because you know why? That's the way the universe works, right? That's the law of attraction that, we, that people talk about all the time. Okay, you are going to then go and you're going to project that. You create your own reality. You create your own reality. Right. So I just wanted to, I just wanted to introduce that that canvas, that that concept um, as far as the brain and how it works and how and what that has to do, because this is all connected. When you talk about information and application, our minds, our minds is the main thing that needs to begin to change. Yeah. Yeah. Our minds alone. It's definitely trauma field. I want to get some more folk on the stream. And Cynthia said, we need leaders. And Al Sharpton is not a leader, in her opinion. This was early on. Sunshine says, we need love, unity, and organization. Tulsa was an excellent example of the results of those three things. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, and, and, and I think that it's actually, it's good that we look back. We have to look back in the past in order to properly understand where we're going, no doubt. But there's a lot of examples today going to your own point, Hanifa. There's a lot of examples today of we need love, unity, you know what I'm of, of, of people in uh, doing big things and great things together as black people right now. Um, Tanisha said, I had to change the way I viewed success or a successful person. I feel you, Tanisha. I went through that process as well myself. You know, going, you know, my the, the first half of my career, you know, was all about getting it back. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, anybody who listened on, I tell them, you know, and and it, it cost me. It cost me a lot of valuable things moving in that energy. And if by any means necessary, I need to get the money and you, you know what I'm saying? Nothing came, nothing came before that. You know, that's the part that people don't tell. You better tell it. That's the part that people don't talk about. Nifa, I, I, I lost, it, it was a lot of valuable things that hurt in that part. My family structure was affected big time. Thinking that, you know what I'm saying? I'm thinking that if I can just get, you know what I'm saying? Us in a place of comfortability, then everything else will work itself out. No. But, but while you're doing that, time is passing and, and children are growing. Away. And, and children them. are growing. Yeah, I, yeah, it's in, a lot. In, in your absence. Yeah, yeah. These children are still growing. Relationship-wise, you know, that it's a, you know running, chasing that bag. You know, okay, you know, it 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 has its, you know, it has its um, what do you call it? Stuff with you know, uh, uh. Anyway, yeah, it's all. It's not always a good thing. 
in my opinion. That's the, that's the, um, that's the lie that most of us, um, and I, I'm gonna go ahead and say feminism, um, and I'm speaking as a black woman, have sold a lot of us. We can have it all. Hmm. We can have it all. And, and to, to tell someone that they can have it all, specifically women, okay? So what you're leaving out is something is going to have to get sacrificed. Right. That's not how it works. Right. Something has to get sacrificed. It would be your peace of mind. It was another thing. You know what I'm saying? Your peace of mind, your stress, your anxious, your overworked. You know what I'm saying? You can't enjoy the good things in life because you got to do this and do that and do that in order to get the bag. And so when it's time to really, I, I tell a story. I, it was at one point, you know, I, I took a vacation, a seven day vacation in the midst of me, you know, in the height of my, you know, uh, grind. It took me Hanifa to day three to be able to settle my mind into vacation mode. For well, three days on that island, I was still in my head, you know, you know, thinking business, you know. So again, that you know, it, it, it messes with your head, you know, if you ain't yeah. careful. But let me get some other folks in. Uh, Patrick, Patrick, hey Patrick, he says love the topic for tonight's broadcast. He's sharing. Patrick, thank you, Patrick. He's down in Mississippi doing his thing with the with the um land. The farm. Ooh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was another thing I had on my list. Um, the things that we could be doing in preparation for moving forward, growing our own food, because nothing is promised or guaranteed anymore. In you know, like it was in the past. You know, things are changing. And so, you know, as far as we so comfortable with just having to just get in our car and drive to the corner to the nearest grocery store and get what we want. And you know what I'm saying? But who's to say that that's going to always be like that. And if it's not going to always be like that, then what are we doing in preparation for ourselves? You and know? I, say, I say this all the time as someone who grew up in the islands where we just hurricane prone. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. When the pandemic happened and people were talking about like, you know, stocking up on food and so forth. And I remember sharing this with Genesis and I was just like, you know, living here, um, like this, this is nothing. This is the fact that for a whole year that you're in a pandemic or whatever, you have all, you, you have access to the internet the whole entire time. Okay. You have electricity. You know what I mean? Like, Talk to me when you guys have to start walking to fetch water. You understand? Talk because, and this is why a lot of us black people, we have, we haven't even begun to learn survival tactics because we are comfortable and cush in this country, right? We don't even know, some of us don't even know to start a fire, okay? <laughs> if it comes down to that. A part of it is because we have gotten so used to convenience and I don't wish this on anyone, don't get me wrong. I'm just saying when people were talking about how difficult life is, I couldn't relate as an islander who had lived through two hurricanes where there was no electricity for months, no school to attend, okay? Where you have to go with your bucket and get your water out the cistern, okay? Like literally, I'm just like, this is nothing. We still, we're still able to be on the internet, talking to each other, watching our timeline, using our cell phones, like all of the, we still could come in and flip a switch and the light comes on. Like call Uber Eats. Eats. Call Uber Eats, all of these things. Yeah, and so I don't think, I think we take a lot for granted and we don't realize just how blessed we are. And, I, and for me, it's like, take advantage of those blessings. Not because you have light means that you shouldn't prepare for when you don't have light. Mm -hmm. Not because you have food means that you shouldn't prepare for when you don't have food. Because you just never know. And the way that the world is going, we really don't know. No one planned for us to be walking around in mask today. Nobody planned that. Nobody forced us. The prophets did not tell us, okay? That they see us walking around and no one made a broadcast to say, get ready in 12 months, you guys will be walking around with masks and you will not be able to enter grocery store. No it's one did you're going to be in school for a year. Thank you. So mm -hmm. I just say that to say like, we just need to take advantage of the cush, the cushness right now, right? Mm -hmm. And create a cushion for when that cushness isn't there anymore, in a sense. 
that's a part of it as well. And again, find like-minded people who are also doing that. Don't stop stocking up on food. Don't stop stocking up on your water. Don't stop, don't, don't stop, um, don't decide that you don't need to go and arm yourself. Okay. Don't stop going to the gun range. Okay. Don't stop going out to whatever classes you were taking to learn certain skills and so forth. No. No, and not because there's a pandemic means that you stop, like you said, collaborating, connecting right. with your brothers and sisters. Because I think the pandemic kind of put a lot of us in that state of mind. Right. It, pushed, it pushed individualism on us even when we didn't want it. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. So there's a lot of that going on as well. But I just kind of wanted to inject that in there. But yeah. Yeah, yeah good stuff. Um, sunshine. Oh, wait a minute. Um, let's go to Saladin first. He says, I understand what sister meant. I agree in her context that we don't necessarily need that whipping and scriptures talk about if we act properly to the call. I was referring from God's, uh, he got a lot here. He was just basically saying, um, so the whipping depends on whether or not we act properly to our needs and wants as a people. Otherwise it's unavoidable. That's a good point yeah i got it yeah yeah we understood what we were saying you guys weren't really like in opposition it was just ironic no, 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 no. That you said that no. same thing that he was saying it i i just i'm for me i'm just kind of shifting i just want us to kind of like shift out of the mindset of thinking that that is the only way to learn you know what i mean right. that's not the only way to learn we can yeah. actually take what we've learned and apply it to situations. Yeah. We don't have to be crushed like grapes all the time. We just yeah. don't. And that's so just, what that, that's what I was coming from. What causes that? Because I see that a lot often, even people close to me that get crushed like grapes. And, but it, and it's not necessary. You know, it's like. I don't, see, you, don't you look at them and be like, they know better? Don't that happen sometimes? I'm like. You don't even have to struggle like this. If only you've done, if only you would do this or this or this, you wouldn't have to struggle like this for years sometimes. And so it breaks my heart. So that's why I asked what, what causes people to have to, well, not have to, but be under that, that whip, you know what I'm saying? Unnecessarily. I think it comes from the lack of um, proper information. Mm. The lack of proper information. I think, I think that, Oftentimes we allow ourselves, going again back to one of your awesome points, to get distracted mm -hmm. by so many things, meaningless things in this society that takes up so much of our attention and we distract it to now when it's really time, the things that we really need to know about, we don't because we doing other things, frivolous things with our time. And so now, we're struggling along. We got to go through hell and high water. We got to climb ourselves up out of the hole because where somebody else who had fo focused on, you know, getting the information that necessary, they don't have to go through all that, that, that pain and trauma because they got the information early on. Yeah, there's a lot of energy. You're so right, Alkama. There's a lot of energy vampires out there. You know, there's a lot. And it's not just, and when I say that, I don't even mean people. There's so many things out there fighting for our energy and our attention. Mm -hmm. And as long as something is occupying your energy, it can't be placed into the things that really matter. Mm -hmm. The last thing I wanted to add to, the, to your list um, of things of like application. Hey, listen, <laughs> we have enough information to know that both men and women, black men and black women have suffered, mm -hmm. okay? Under this system right in this country this thing that's happening right now this gender war that's taking place we like, cannot afford to participate in it it breaks my we heart. cannot afford to participate in it we may have our things as far as our that are that we feel our men can do better mm -hmm. our men may have their things that they feel that we can do better I think that we have it in us to have the conversations with, without trying to annihilate each other, okay? We cannot afford to participate in this. The other thing that I want to add to that is what I've realized in listening to some of these discussions and panels on YouTube is 
we are using this it's almost like a, a eurocentric type of standard by which we are trying to build our relationships on okay so it's like you living in a in a in a, a place where you are the minority right so you you're not the dominant society so the dominant society there are certain luxuries right and there are certain privileges that the dominant society gets to have as it pertains to their relationship that you cannot have in this country okay they are allowed to partake in those things because of the power dynamics and this is something black people don't want to talk about we want to just point the finger at each other no it is because our men are oppressing us our men are pointing and saying now they're calling us modern woman that's the new term no it's because women black women won't humble themselves and be quiet and let men lead okay there's a whole lot of stuff going on and there's some strings above us being pulled that we're not seeing because if i can if i could divide your household alchema then i can conquer your household easily if i can have you fighting against your husband or side eyeing your husband or looking at your husband as less than then i can come in and snatch you up from your husband right okay yep. if i can make you believe the images that i paint of your men and i can make you believe the pin the images that i paint of your black woman if you can't see that black women act a certain way if you're trying to take the black woman out of her experience in America and just label it as separated from the experience and say, no, that's because that's because you're a black woman. That's why. Not because of your experiences, but simply because you're a black woman. That's why you're the way you are. If I, if, if you could take the black man out of his experiences, right? If you could disconnect the two, okay? It doesn't matter. You grow now, you're responsible for yourself, whatever it is. And I could separate him from that. Then I begin to say, well, it must be because you are a black man. That's why you act the way you do. We cannot afford to get caught up in that. We have to hold on to our history. We have to de deal with each other within the context of this oppressive society. It doesn't mean that you're saying, no, it's on them and we don't take accountability. But in your taking accountability, you need to be aware as to what outside sources, right, are affecting your coming together as black man and black woman. I watching this on YouTube for the last couple of months. It is nauseating. It is disgusting. And it is foolish. We cannot afford to partake in it. We will die. We will die. And if we don't understand it on that level, you just broke it down though so brilliantly. We don't understand it on that level. We're coming from a place of pain, both of us, a black man and a black woman. It's a painful thing. So what happens is hurt people hurt people. And so when you are in so much pain, you know, the, the your first instinct is to lash out on the, the one I had, as Dr. Naeem taught us last week, the pe persons that's closest to you. So your black brother, your black sister, that's the one that's closest to you. And so you the you you see them as the the author of all your pain. And so you lash out on them and you know black women ain't shit. Black men ain't nothing but dogs and cheaters and liars and etc cetera, etc. Cetera. Like you said without understanding the basis of which where all of this pain is stemming from that's why the root causes of everything is so vital and so important to get you got to understand the root causes because right now we're just dealing on surface you know what mm -hmm. i'm saying you hurt me you cheated on me you dogged me out you know what i'm saying so yeah you did it ain't nobody else do it but you but like you said you don't understand the basis of being raised and bred in this society and what all that what comes along with all that what comes along with all I the was, music was, you listen to the television shows you watch all, all the your brothers on the street corner that you hang out with your father who you know what i'm saying didn't know his own damn self and how he you know raised you if he was even there so all those different dynamics involved the, the things that you didn't learn about yourself in school and so now you don't even have a proper understanding of the power within because you nobody ever taught you that so all these things combined making up 
the individual who you come in contact with. And so, and when they come looking like something foreign, because they are, you know what I'm saying? They are implanted minds. So they are. And so you take all your pain and frustration out on them without understanding the backstory. This is, this is the, this is the last, I'm going to say, this is the last thing I'm going to say to that as well is the question was put to me, do women need men? Okay. Particularly black women need black men. And it took me a minute, but I responded to it. And what I, what I came to understand, even within myself, as, because I could, I'll be very honest, there was a time that I was really pondering this question, right? And saying, okay, if women could do this, 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 then what's the need for a man? And because I asked that, asked that question and put it out into the universe, right? I was now, and I'm still in the middle of studying, subjected. <laughs> forced into really studying and understanding the masculine and feminine principles and how that shows up in nature, how it shows up within us, ourselves, and how it functions as far as this harmonious dance. And the, my answer to the person was very simple. As long as we reduce men to simply providers, then we don't need them. Not in this, you know why? Because if you reduce a man to simply a provider, I want to be very clear, not, we're not talking about protector or anything, I'm simply saying, if you reduce men to dollar signs, what happens when you can take care of yourself in that capacity? What happens when you can now provide for yourself? Where does that leave men? Do you see how that goes? Because men have to be more than providers to us. We have to understand that they're more than providers because if we don't understand that, we're not going to see any need for them in our space. We're not going to need, see any need for them as fathers. If we don't understand the essence of men, we don't understand the essence of the masculine, we don't understand how that works, then we are always going to find ways in which we can exclude them. It's the same thing with men. As long as you reduce Okay, woman to the way they look, what happens when, they don't, when they, they don't look that way anymore? Families are being abandoned. What happens if you, just, if you just reduce a woman to what she can do for you? What she can do for you? If you could cook, and if you reduce a woman to cooking, what happens when you could cook for yourself? If you reduce a woman to doing domesticated stuff, what happens when you can do your own laundry? Cook your own food. If you just reduce us to, you understand what I'm saying? Women and the essence of women have to be more than that. And a lot of us, to be honest, as women, we don't know who we are. And as men, we don't know who we are. And that's why we can ask those silly questions, do we need each other? Because we don't understand the root of who we are, the core essence of what makes us different. Uh-oh, you all right? Okay, <laughs> what makes us so uniquely different to where, you know what I'm saying? When we come together, it becomes a whole circle, <laughs> a whole circle, a holistic circle. And so when we're not together, we're cut. It's like being, it's like cutting the apple right down the middle. You know what I'm saying? You just getting half of the value of all that it entails. You on mute, sis. That's a big part of it. We have to find a way to come together. And the only way that we can come together is if we figure out a way how to balance these energies within our own selves. Otherwise, we're not going to respect the balance outside of ourselves. So we have to figure that out. Because really, really, if I don't need a man, right, how are we procreating? How are we continuing our legacies? Where are these children coming from? If the men don't need women and the women don't need men, yeah. we don't just die off. Is that the plan? Just your natural instincts of the desire when you don't have a mate, unless you're just not in your natural instinct. You know what I'm saying? I think that, you know, it, the desire to be connected to another soul, you know what I'm saying? When you're not, you know, I think that's one of the most natural things that you can, that uh, natural emotions around, 
you know? And so I think that we've convinced ourselves in a lot of different, or we've, we've taken that natural desire and, and usurped it. And, and now it, it, it looks something different because now we take those desires and we use them on uh, <laughs> other things like plastic toys or, you know what I'm saying? Or other things like uh, 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 porn or, you know what I'm saying? Or one night stands and all those kind of things. But I think the desire to be connected with another source is still there. It just comes out um, um, distorted when we're not when we're not healthy, when we're not operating in a healthy space. And I think we just need to be honest, like serious talk, serious talk. What your vision as a woman, okay? Because that's what we do, right? We, we're creators naturally, right? Who is building these things? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where are the muscles? To build these infrastructures for you mm -hmm. where they're coming from mm -hmm. because i'll come out i'm not calling you to build a house for me i'm not mm -mm. i'm not calling my sister up the street and i'm like we really need to have these realistic conversation okay the one the, the, the men need to understand the woman is not something for you to conquer all mm -hmm. right for you to beat into submission mm -hmm. okay and women we need to understand our men are not here for us to manipulate Okay, and for us to just direct them in how we think the direction we think things should go in. It's a partnership. And I am seeing this and I'm like, you know what? I know I have an idea of why it's happening because I feel like out of chaos, usually there's something that usually something new that comes out of chaos, yeah. right? So usually there's a lot of pain and stuff when in the burden process. Yeah. For, the, for lack of a better, um, uh, right. So there's like a burden process happening. I'm excited to see what this new thing is that's going to come out of it. But there's a lot of kicking up and pain that's happening right now because I really feel like they're in, we're in the process of, of creating something new. You know what I mean? So now you see a lot of, a lot of conversation with men really uh, voicing their frustrations you know, towards us. And I think as women, it's important that we listen right without the critical like yeah just just hear. even if you don't like the tone that it's being said in and i'm learning how to do this more and more just hear it just try to listen to it right and i said and men as well men need to hear what women are saying because really at the end of the day when you listen to a lot of these women who are bashing black men and all of this other they are hurt they are hurt and you cannot dismiss their pain simply because it was caused by a black man and now they see all black men as the enemy you have to have some compassion and some understanding around that the same thing with with black men i have i have observed that a lot of our men have a lot of misdirected anger they matter their mamas they are mad at their mamas and they are projecting a lot of that onto black women honestly speaking but we need to hear that, right? So as a black woman, your mother hurt you. She was a woman. She didn't do what women are supposed to do as far as nurturing and giving you warmth and all of these things, right? So now you're looking at me as, as your enemy. I need to know it's not personal. And so now I need to approach you with compassion. You understand what I'm saying? So men are asking for respect. Women are asking for protection. <laughs> Uh, but we're not hearing each other because we're speaking two different languages. But as far as this division that's happening, Black people, Black men and Black women, whoever is listening, we can't afford to have partake in it. It will destroy us. Sunshine says, I agree, Hanifa. However, we have a lot of males and females as opposed to men and women within our society today. You want to address that? Uh, not really, because I think people say there's a difference between. Uh, <laughs> but I think we went into male and why that is, is in reference to animals. But go ahead, sorry. No, I, but I think we went into why that is, though. You know, I guess she's saying there's a lot of people that are adults, but they acting like children. That's what I get out of her. Yeah, yeah. But you know, yeah, yeah you know, that's that's definitely truth to that. But then we gotta go, we gotta dig deep. We gotta dig deep to understand why that is. No excuses, you know, for the behavior, but to better understand what you're working with, what you're dealing with. We 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 are um we lack knowledge of self. Yeah. We lack knowledge of self. And here's the reality: you can't learn knowledge of self from a book. Hmm. You can't. You the the book can, can guide you to how you can go about 
seeking knowledge of self, but you're not going to acquire knowledge of self. The key is knowledge of self, self being you. That's so true. There is no you written in a book anywhere. Right. You're uniquely you, Alkama. You're not going to flip open this book by this author, Elizabeth Patterson, okay, and find Alkama in there, right? No, you might find some directions and how you could go look for Alkama, right? Mm -hmm. So you're not going to find knowledge of self in a book. Knowledge of self comes from study of self. We have to sit with ourselves. We don't want, most of us can't even sit alone, okay? And we can't be silent. Huh? And being brutally honest with who you are. <laughs> we don't, we, we, we are afraid to spend time with our own thoughts. When we sit in the car, there's music. Okay, when we come in the house, there's stimulation every chance we get. Knowledge of self comes from studying self. That's it. And that's the only way. And, and as a, if you're a woman, you need to understand what that means from the inside out. Yeah. What is the makeup of a woman? Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? What is her essence? What is that about? Yeah. And if you're a man, you have to study yourself as well. Because here's, here's what we're doing. We don't know ourselves, right? I don't know myself as a woman, but I'm busy trying to tell men how to be men. I was just going to say that to her point, to Sunshine's point. It's like, when I hear that, it's like, like you just said, it's like this is too many, you know, males and females out in the world. But when we, when we go within to gain the proper knowledge of who we are and understand ourselves, then we are in a position to make changes for the better in our own life. And once yeah. that happens, we start attracting other people to us that have also done that kind of work and that are also on the same, because there's frequencies, everything is energy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So you're now you're operating at a higher frequency because you're, you know, so your aura, you have done some work on your aura to make, to elevate you to a higher frequency. And so now, now you're in a, a different frequency where other people in that same frequency are congregating. And so you're no longer um, connecting. You may come across them and meet them and, you know, converse with them, but you're no longer connecting with the same type of people that could be a male or a female that should be a man or a woman because you now are elevating to a higher frequency. And so I think that is a part, portion of what we don't understand and recognize when we start pointing the finger out at other people. You ain't doing what you supposed to do. You ain't, you, you a man, you a male, you ain't a man and da, 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 da. Well, what about you sis? What about where you, where are you elevating? And the more we focus on what other people aren't doing, the less we are focused on what we need to do. So, yeah. The, the thing about my last piece will be like, the more that you understand like womanhood, yourself as a woman, you, you could start to see where manhood will play a part in that when you connect with it. You get what I'm trying to say? You could see where, okay, as a woman, I naturally I don't be thinking about this. So you might say, okay, this is where this man comes in because sometimes he see things that I don't see, right? And sometimes she thinks of things that I don't think about, but you have to, you have to understand self first. So I just kind of wanted to throw the relationship piece in there because this is a hot topic right now going on and there's a lot, yes, there's a lot of, just that. yes, there's a lot of fighting going on right now. Okay, there's a lot of fighting going on. There are certain like YouTube channels that I might click on and the way that they talk about black men and calling them dusties and everything else is appalling and it's disgusting. And I can't even sit. I can't even sit on that for five minutes. Yeah. And then I might go to something where the men are discussing black women and I'm just like, how? Are, but there are thousands of people watching this and, and consuming this on a daily basis. And that goes back to my example of the consciousness and frequencies where it's like, you know what? I'm focused on my purple Porsche. So now that's all I see, yeah. right? Because that's my focus. I'm focused on black men not being shit. And so that's all I see is ain't shit black men. Do you get what I'm saying? So I just kind of wanted to, and the same thing with men. I'm focused on what black women need to uh, ain't not doing. And so now all I'm seeing, okay, it's an algorithm. Right. It's an algorithm. We know how the computer works, right? 
when you start constantly clicking on stuff, all of a sudden now, <laughs> you don't even have to go look for it, Alcoma. The computer come and say, here you go. This is what you want. <laughs> because right. this is what you've been looking at for the last couple of days. So right. here you go. You don't even have to go search. Here you go. This is what you want. It's the same thing with your frequency. When you wake up and you start thinking, that whole, your consciousness is like, there it is. That's what we like. That's what we're focused on. Yeah. Tanisha said white supremacy is using both black women and black men and our children. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's, uh, that's, uh, yeah, that, that's how they stay in power. That's how they say, again, they, they are powerful because we don't know our own power. We don't recognize our own power and we don't recognize our own power because we haven't taken the time to sit with ourselves and learn it and learn it. You know what I'm saying? And so, yeah. So there's another group of people who are not, you know, who, who, um, don't even have the power that we house. They actually usurp our energy. You know what I'm saying? Like parasites, they usurp our energy. And because we don't recognize our own, you know, we lean on them for theirs. And so in order for them to stay powerful, we have to be in this position, in this predicament, fighting against one another, broken families, living in poverty, you know, struggling along that whip Saladin talked about being whipped into submission, all those things. They, it has to be this way in order for another people to be in power. That's the, that's, 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 and that's, that's capitalism in a nutshell. Yes. Somebody has to be at the bottom. Yes. Somebody has to be at the bottom. Like at the end of the day, someone has to be at the bottom. That's how it works. That's the up, the down, the in, the out, the left, the right, the rich, <laughs> the poor, the power, the powerless. You can go on and on and on. So yeah, in order for some, for them to remain in power, we have to remain in this position. So that was the whole point of our whole message today. Under construction, information to application. Because once we start applying what we understand and know, then now we, we shift the balance. We shift the scales and in, in, in the, 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 um, the balancing tips. Yeah. Yeah, well, we way went over. Way we over, yes. <laughs> way went over, but I think it was necessary. Yeah, I, yeah. I think we have to do a show on the relationship thing. We have to. We gotta bring some men on. We gotta yeah. bring some men and women. I would like a big, a big panel, at least three to three, if possible, so we could talk about it off air. But yes, we do need to do the relationship one because it is trending right now, and there needs to be a different voice introduced to the conversation yeah so let's talk about it off air alchema and family you hear her you hear her so if you would like to come on Thank you. uh, if you're a brother or sister out there anywhere you anywhere that you are watching we can pull you up on zoom and you can be a part of our discussion in one of uh, uh, uh one of our upcoming weeks soon so reach out inbox us let us know if you want to come join us for the discussion all right. Thank you all, family. Thank you, Patrick. He said, great show. Tanisha, Sunshine, Khalil, um, Crystal, um, my son, Kyrie, CJ. Um, thank you all so much for tuning in to the, and making this a really lively, Saladin, a really lively discussion. Appreciate you all. All right. Until next time. See you guys next Monday. Same place, same time, 8 p.m. Until next time. Peace. Peace.